Hi, my name is Leo Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us in gold fundamental and technical analysis. Now, I received a, um, a comment on YouTube from a trader who said fundamental analysis never works for the simple reason that the market usually prices in all the fundamental news even before it happens. If you are relying on mainstream media for your fundamental news, you are trading using stale news and news that has already been priced in. And it's a common sentiment, I guess, from traders who don't really understand how to trade fundamental and risk sentiment analysis and at the end of this video i'm going to give you my thoughts and really explain um you know kind of how the market works from a very um uh, from a different uh, view in terms of the fundamentals and uh, um, how the market prices in and why the market prices in and how you can actually get ahead as well of um, and trade in alignment with the institutions and not necessarily wait for the um, for the for the news right in but for the sake of this video I tend to look at news which is um, obviously what happened but also if you actually you know tend to kind of listen to maybe my analysis you can kind of see my where my bias is going anyway of course, I can't share everything uh, that I uh, that I know in these uh, in these weekly videos, but um, and also as well, I can't offer financial advice. But um, I will share my thoughts on um, on this uh, uh, quite common um, thought and uh, comment on and comment on YouTube. Anyways, getting into the week ahead. Uh, 3rd of April, it will be a busy week in the US with non-farm payrolls, jolt jobs, openings, ISM services and manufacturing PMI and external trade data taking the central stage. So busy week in the, for the US data. Also, inflation rates will be released for Switzerland um, and central banks in Australia, New Zealand uh, will decide on the course of monetary policy. Finally, PMI figures are set to show the state of manufacturing, the manufacturing sector in China and Canada, Spain and Italy. And so uh, that would be important as well. The PMI figures, um, everyone's pretty much watching that because there's a China trade idea, which is basically if China um, start to grow and the economy starts to grow, um, then it can lift the global economy as China is really the world's economic engine. And so if China starts to grow, then um, it has a knock on effect um, and affects other currencies and countries and currencies, especially um, uh, countries that are geographically close to um, uh, China um, and also do a lot of trade with China, like for example, Aus the Aus Australian economy and New Zealand as well. So, so um, if China starts to grow, then it will affect certain currencies more than others. And so, yeah, uh, China is definitely something to watch. And so you can also um, uh, read the uh, paragraphs, but I'll just read basically the summary and get into uh, this week's uh, fundamentals and uh, some technicals. So starting off from the dollar index. And the dollar index, again, is just a measure of dollar strength against a basket of currencies like the euro, the pound, and the, uh, the yen. And um, I keep my eye on the dollar index just to kind of show me what the you know, dollar's strength weakness from a technical perspective. Um, but I'm also obviously driven by fundamental analysis, right? So from a fundamental perspective, um, my bias actually is um, is short on the um, on the dollar for now. I do think that there is op an opportunity to buy the dollar in the sh very short term, but over the next maybe th uh, I would say probably three to six months, I um, can see the dollar devaluing. So uh, on any pullbacks, I'm looking for actually short trades. And the Fed's uh, Fed's William says policy will be driven by data amid uncertainty. So whether the Federal Reserve hike, uh, continue to hike, or actually uh, pause early. Um, it will be data driven and um, and so uh, the Federal Reserve officials say they are keeping a close eye on the effects of recent banking turmoil on the economic outlook as they weigh how much further to raise interest rates. So they still are on the hiking cycle, but that is likely to come to an end sooner if the data doesn't support rate hikes. So comments on Friday from the New York Fed President John Williams and Fed Governor Lisa Cook also echoed remarks from three regional uh, Fed presidents this week that policymakers will keep 
uh, up their efforts to bring down inflation, which is one of their mandates, uh, which remains far above their goal in the economic outlook um, is uncertain and our policy decisions will be driven by the data and the achievement of our maximum employment and price stability mandates, uh, Williams said Friday during an event organised by uh, Hughes-Setonic Community College in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And so ultimately, yes, inflation is still uh, above their 2% target. Um, data did come out yesterday, um, inflation tar inflation readings did come out yesterday on, I say yesterday, but it was on Friday. Um, but basically, uh, inflation is coming down, measures of inflation are coming down as well. So as inflation starts to come down, the Fed are less likely to continue hiking. And so um, I do think in the short term, um, there could be maybe a price pullback, but I think value wise, I do think that uh, price should want to go lower on the dollar or it could obviously you know, continue to go lower, right? Uh, depending on uh, the data, if uh, the economy is coming out and um, again, the inflation measures are continuing to actually um, slow down and, and lower towards their two percent target, then I can see the dollar actually continuing to drop. If inflation measures come out th higher, then the Fed are likely to be have to be a bit more hawkish. Uh, but overall, I think the dollar is a uh, a sell at least over the medium to short term. But there are opportunities to look for potentially if you want to anyway, uh, buying opportunities. But the data has to support that narrative. Um, dollar yen and i'm actually in this trade i got in on friday and this is uh, now at least a break-even trade took some partial profits and so i'm hoping that prices will continue to go to the downside as the dollar gets weaker also as well um the fed are hiking soon to pause and actually the bank of japan are holding rates and possible yield curve adjustments yield curve control adjustment and uh what that is is um, a monetary policy they're basically changing their monetary policy um and that should appreciate the uh, the japanese yen now nobody knows exactly when it's you know going to happen it could happen between you know now and um june and the bank of japan actually came out and said that they're not going to announce when they're going to do it in terms of they're not going to uh, forecast they're just going to do it as far as they're going to they're going to surprise the market rather than telegraph and so um I think once they do, and the market expectation is that they will have to adjust yield curve control at some point, I do think that the dollar yen uh, should want to go down to at least and um, revisit these lows. So let's see what happens here. And so we did have prices pull back to this uh, supply zone. That's really where my bias is. And uh, managed to get in on an intraday stop hunt, which came up into the... Uh, uh, the supply zone and uh, as I said before um, I'm actually break even on that trade now so definitely can't lose if you are looking to buy the dollar then there is an opportunity to buy at these areas here in fact probably will probably more draw it there to there so they've made higher highs higher lows and then you've also got that absolute lows which is uh, down at these areas here so um there is an opportunity to buy the dollar if there is some good news if prices do pull back during the week and prices come down here and there is some positive news for the dollar then um in fact that is a decent buying opportunity at the one three ones down to maybe the one two nine six fours uh moving on to the dollar swiss um not necessarily a pair i'm interested in the um Again, from a central bank perspective, the Federal Reserve hiking rates were soon to pause and also the Swiss National Bank are hiking rates and also soon to pause. And so, um, yeah, in a risk-off environment, you would think that maybe the Swiss National Bank might be uh, slightly ahead of the Fed simply because um, the uh, Swiss franc is typically a risk-off currency. And if, um, you know, the banking crisis does start to uh, heat up again and there are more banks uh, that are in um, problems then I think the, uh, the money should flow probably more into the Swiss franc and especially depending on where the bank 
um, actually is in the world, right? So if it come if it's um, coming from, for example, you know, the United States, then um, obviously money is is going to flow out of the, the the dollar, right? In terms of um, why would you put money into the, and buy the dollar when the origin of the risk off and the crisis is actually originating in the US, right? And so money will probably typically flow into the Swiss franc. And so what you're looking for are pullbacks, right? Or pullbacks into maybe a zone that you're comfortable with, decent pullback into the 9260s if you can get that, and then look for any kind of uh, buy trades. In terms of, um, in terms of buying, um, again, buying the dollar, if prices do come down to these areas and the absolute lows, then that's decent. But if you look to the left, you've seen that this is this area has been touched uh, once already. And typically what you want to do is buy at the first you know touch of a demand zone as that's where really the bargain prices is, um, are, right? It was a bargain here, prices went to the upside, prices came down, it was a bargain again, prices went to the upside, right? And so um, the more times the level is touched, the less of a bargain it becomes because everyone can see it now. Um, and so, uh, and so, yeah, it's for me, it's not the, the best trade in the world to take, but it's decent if you do get a catalyst of some decent news for the dollar. Uh, dollar CAD, dollar CAD has been a bit of a surprising one. I think um, in terms of central banks, you have the Federal Reserve who are hiking still, so that should support the dollar at least in the in the short term. But the Bank of in um, sorry Canada have actually paused rates, and so um, yeah, you're seeing this pullback. So if you do think that the uh, the dollar is still worth a buy, then these are really the zones that you want to get involved in in terms of uh, buying the uh, the U.S. dollar. Right, you can buy the U.S. dollar right now into that zone. I think actually with the confluence of some horizontal support and resistance. I think that level actually is quite um, quite a decent um, area to look for buy trades. If you want to buy the dollar, that is. I'm not really a buyer of the dollar, but if I was buying the dollar, it probably would be against something like the Canadian dollar um, in this zone or in this zone if it comes down to the 1347s to 1344s. Um, the Canadian dollar for me, not really a buy. And I understand oil is going um, you know, higher and the Canadian dollar and oil are uh, typically correlated. They're not correlated 100% of the time, but um, I would really have to see um, a really, a, a, I think a drastic change in the Canadian economy for me to want to uh, buy the, um, the Canadian dollar. And also as well, I would probably want to see the uh, Federal Reserve actually pause rates as well in order for me to want to buy the Canadian dollar against the um, the uh, US dollar, but again, it's not really a pair that I'm interested in at all at the moment. Um, moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and um, we've pretty much just really uh, gone uh, auctioned, right? As far as, you know, most people would say that this is more of a ranging market over the past um, couple of weeks, right? So prices have maintained this, this auction um, and this range, um, and so for me, uh, again, not really a pair I'm interested in. I do think that this area, uh, this demand zone is a nice technical zone in order to look for any kind of buy trades. If you're looking for short trades, probably waiting for um, uh, a uh, move back up into a fresher area of supply. So you'd be wanting to buy the US dollar against the New Zealand dollar, then you're looking for a pullback up into this zone before looking at getting short. But if you're looking to buy the uh, New Zealand dollar based off of maybe some uh, risk um, on maybe China, um, a better data than expected, then I think any pullbacks into this 61 area is gonna be a really nice buy in terms of riding the Chinese reopening wave. And again, from a central bank perspective, you've got two central banks that are hiking, but soon to pause. So they're pretty much even when you see um, central banks that are you know, pretty much seen as even, then you will tend to get markets that move um, in an auction or what traders would typically know, know as sideways moving. And so, um, Getting into the um, 
the pound. And the pound, um, the pound has had a definitely a reversal of fortunes, right, in terms of fundamentals. From a from a from a uh, central bank perspective, the Federal Reserve, um, obviously a hiking rate soon to pause, but the Bank of England are expected to pause, but they're dependent, right? And in fact, um, that has slightly changed now. Um, in terms of uh, because the data came out with inflation that was actually higher than expected. So um, I think the market is actually going to price is pricing in a 50 50 chance of an actual hike. Also, as well, there was some decent news um, for the UK economy. So UK firms report surge in orders amid signs of economic recovery. And so after UK narrowly misses recession, IOD reports rise in business the uh, demand confidence hiring and investment in march and so yeah there was recent gdp data that came out uh, uh, better than expected for the pound and so um the pound you've seen that um, continue really to kind of drive the pound higher against uh, the dollar the better than expected news over the past um a uh, few months I shouldn't say necessarily three months, probably say maybe about a month or so. And it's kind of caught the market, including myself, by a surprise, right? There's, a, there's been a, um, a lot of um, unwinding of uh, short um, pound positions. And so uh, as the pound does better than expected, it was actually expected to um, go into a, a recession. And now we've actually avoided a recession and you're seeing that reflected in actually the pound uh, strength across the board and so any pullbacks i think into this lower zone maybe the one two twos down into the one two one fives um should be actually decent for a potential buy if you're looking to buy the pound dollar and so um with the uh, fed being a bit dovish i think and the uh, bank of england being slightly more hawkish i think any kind of pullback especially maybe down into these lower zones i think are going to be decent for a potential buy on the pound now personally if would i be a buyer of the pound against the dollar probably i might it's, it's something i'm watching it's definitely on the watch list um and uh, i'd want to see some really good prices come back down you know what i mean for me to want to get long and some more positive news out of the uh, pound and some um uh, so not so good news out of the dollar right but i think if prices pull back it maybe is worth a, a small position um if you really want to understand uh, the fundamentals um, and really how we go about, um, you know, looking at in-depth fundamentals, uh, I know a lot of people have been asking, um, when does enrollment start? When does enrollment start? If you go to trading com, it starts on Monday, the 3rd of April. So not long until you're able to join the uh, mentoring group, Discord group. And uh, what you get in here really is uh, top-notch fundamental and technical analysis. This was, you know, a trade that we took um, the other day, um, uh, which was the New Zealand CAD, and it was just uh, showing, um, you know, traders. We spoke about this trade on our weekly call, which you're always invited to, and uh, also as well, this is now a profitable trade on the New Zealand CAD. So it's been a, a decent week. Also as well, you get access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, which I show you my bias on pairs, whether I'm neutral on a watch list and whether I have a strong bias to go long or short on the pairs. And also as well, uh, as well as many different things that you'll learn currency value cycle and really how to kind of use the spreadsheet in alignment with the currency value cycle and why you should look to buy one twos or threes or actually sell currencies that have ranked one two or three on the currency spreadsheet and why you can actually potentially buy uh, a currency that is ranked six seven or eight right um and buy it um, but understanding, obviously, uh, forecasting and uh, how the banks trade and uh, looking for bargains, right? And so, uh, yeah, if you're interested, Monday the 3rd of April is when enrollment opens. So getting back to the charts, um, euro dollar and the euro dollar, um, a lot of traders, in fact, in the group ended up getting involved in this trade uh down here the 105s and they've actually have held up until um these highs and so well done to them um and that was based off of 
again, just some fundamentals and understanding that the euro really was the uh, currency to buy against the uh, the dollar. And the Fed, again, of course, they're hiking, but the ECB, European Central Bank, are the most hawkish uh, central bank at the moment. And so you're seeing that. You saw a bit of a pullback, of course, um, which was due when you had this large move to the upside. Of course, you're going to get end up getting a pullback to some degree. And so this was really the area that you wanted to look for any kind of long trades. And so, yep, this is basically what's happened. And um, But moving forward, I don't think anything's really changed from last week. You've got a wide area of demand, but you also have, again, um, and basically what had happened from last week's uh, analysis, prices obviously came down into that zone, right? Traders bought here as well in the group, and then one, two, three, four, five days later, we're back up at the highest, right? And so, again, that was a really nice buying opportunity. Again, if you look at last week's analysis, um, this is basically what I was saying, the top end of that, if not, then the uh, 106.3s and then the absolute lows at the 105.2s. And so prices actually did bounce off of that level of demand in conjunction with a nice area of support and resistance. So nice, nice uh, trade there if you managed to get involved in that for the week. Um, where do we go from here? Um, I think probably the upside is capped. I think the market is waiting for um, the Fed you know, obviously the data to, to come out. And I do think that any pullbacks into any of these zones, even deeper pullbacks are probably better buyers um, for the euro. And again, um, you have to really watch the euro um, and seeing what the central bank is doing. And so um, from what I can see, inflation is still high, right? So euro area core inflation hits record back in case for ECB hikes. And so consumer prices rise 6.9% uh, on year, core inflation at 5.7%. ECB rate setters have zeroed in on underlying price trends. And so, yep, we, we still got, you know, um, uh, problems with inflation. And so, um, you know, it says uh, what Bloomberg Economics says, the March inflation reading adds to, adds to the case for additional tightening or rate hiking from the ECB that follows comments from even dovish policymakers about the need for further hikes now that stress is uh, stress in the banking sector has receded. So, um, yeah, you're seeing obviously even dovish uh, members of the ECB become hawkish, and so the the uh, ECB is you know likely to continue to be the most hawkish central bank in terms of rate hikes and getting inflation down. So that should want to help and support anyway the uh, the euro um, if it does pull back to these uh, deeper levels especially against the uh, the uh, the dollar Australian dollar US dollar and um, yeah the, the Aussie I think um, is a decent buy if prices come back down to this uh, 0.65 cent area the Australian dollar actually are expected to pause rates on Tuesday but it's a bit of, it's, you know, we were reading some bank analysis and a couple of them were saying that, in fact, it might be a hawkish hold, meaning that although they hold rates, it's they're likely to potentially still carry on with um, rate hikes. So they haven't necessarily ended their hike. But again, that's obviously speculation. If the uh, RBA do come out and pause rates, but their speech comes out as hawkish saying that they are may likely to resume rate hikes, then you will see, in fact, the uh, Australian dollar likely to increase in value. And it won't, I don't know whether it will do it straight away. No one knows um, if it will or if it won't go straight to the heavens or if it will pull back. But if it's hawkish, it's likely to be supported. And so um, that's what the market is looking towards. It's about um, the future rather than, and this is what, traders tend to um retail the average retail trader who doesn't really understand fundamentals uh tends to do is that they just wait for the rate hike and then try to press buy and that's really not how to kind of trade um you know rate hikes you have to one of the things that you have to do is look at the actual speech and the and the forward guidance as to what the central bank is likely to do and they're going to tell you right they will tell you what they're going to do it might not be in the most simplest language in the world but um 
if you uh, follow along, um, you know, on maybe on Bloomberg or some other, maybe another free, um, some free uh, websites, news websites, then um, pretty much analysts will digest that information for you. And then they will tell you pretty much what the central bank is uh, is uh, likely to do in the future. So, um, again, I think decent pullback into a fresh area technically is a nice uh, potential buy. Again, uh, I would really want to be a buyer against the dollar once the China reopening does um, start to come to fruition as well as the end of rate hikes for the uh, Federal Reserve. And finally, gold. Gold, um, I think with the decline of the dollar um, over the medium term, any pullbacks, I think, into this uh, demand zone, 1913s to the 1885 uh, area, I think it's going to be a really nice opportunity to buy gold if you've missed out on that buying gold opportunity. And um, this was from ING, talking about safe haven buying boost gold prices. And so um, we look at uh, the Fed policy and what they think is going to support gold. And it talks about, um, it says the Fed policy is likely to be key for gold over the medium term. The Fed is likely approaching a peak in Fed funds rates and we could see a pivot over the second half of this year. Recent events suggest that credit flows will become more restrictive. Um, and it says, whilst we expect uh, a pullback in prices in the short term, which is going to be lovely, right? A sh pullback in prices in the short term, right? There. We see gold prices moving higher over the second half of 2023 and expect spot gold to average $2,000 an ounce over the fourth quarter of 2023. The assumptions around this are that we do not see further deterioration in the banking sector and that the Fed starts cutting rates towards the end of the year. Um, and the reason why they would cut rates is because I think the, the market is um, expecting actually the US to enter into a recession at some point this year as well. So uh, recession fears, going to be good for gold in a risk-off environment. So um, I say risk-off environment, but risk-off more for the US economy and recession fears. So um, that should support gold. So again, 2000s is the highs at the moment, right? If any pullbacks, I think that's going to be a very nice uh, buy for gold. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. I do have the question to answer regarding fundamentals and, uh, you know, everything being priced in. So stay tuned. I'm going to um, start answering that now. So to the question um, and the statement, really, which is fundamental analysis never works for the simple reason that market usually prices in all the fundamental news even before it happens. If you are relying on mainstream media for your fundamental news, you are trading using stale news and that news has already been priced in. Now, there are elements of this statement that I um, agree with definitely in terms of the market pricing in fundamental news typically before the data is released and if um, Retail traders are relying on mainstream media for fundamental news. Uh, you are trading stale news. Um, and to a certain degree, that, that, that might be slightly true if they're, if they're waiting for the actual news um, release and the data release before trading. Um, then, yes, typically, um, you know, the value of that currency and exchange rate has been priced in 100%. But, it, but really... Um, I think there's maybe a bit of confusion in this, which because um, it's admitting that actually fundamental analysis um, does work, right? Because if you're, you know, the quest, the statement is saying that the fundamentals have been priced in, um, it's really just, I guess, not a case of fundamentals not working. It's a case of uh, retail traders being behind the curve, and so um, in terms of you know buying the rumor, right? And so. Retail traders typically don't know how to get ahead of the curve or at least trade in line with the financial institutions. And one of the things that you have to do, first of all, is understand um, uh, GDP, right? The, the effect of GDP, right? And um, 
sorry about my pen tool, GDP, that's supposed to be a D, um, uh, inflation, right? I'll put I and F, right? And the effect of GDP and inflation on whether a central bank is likely to hike, hold, or cut interest rates. I'll put INR, right? Interest rates. Because interest rates are one of the main factors of giving a currency its value, yeah? And so once you can understand the data and the relationship between GDP and inflation, um, and what the central bank is looking at, because central bank ultimately will look at, you know, these main things as to whether they're likely to decide to hike, uh, hold or cut. Yeah. Then actually you can trade um, ahead of the curve. Also, a second thing is that when news is released, let's say, for example, FOMC comes out and the um, and the uh, Federal Reserve uh, you know, they hike rates, let's say, by 0.25%. Yeah. Yes, that news has been priced in. But what the market is also watching for and listening to, more importantly, because they've already priced in this 0.25% uh, or 25 basis point, you know, hike, is they're looking at the speech, right, and what the future guidance and what the central bank um, or banker or bankers are thinking, right, in terms of their uh, their speech. And so the speech is actually more important than the actual data. But most retail traders um, won't, um, you know, read the speech or they won't look at mainstream media, right, and their interpretation of what the um, speech is. And one of the things you can kind of do to kind of filter uh, what type of mainstream media you um, listen to is or read um, is um, understanding or, or getting mainstream media that interviews analysts or uh, money managers and their opinions, right? Because that ultimately it's their opinions that matter. And so if I'm, you know, for example, reading Bloomberg, I'm going to read articles or look for articles where they are interviewing the experts um, you know, about their opinions on what the speech meant in terms of whether the uh, Federal Reserve are hawkish, which would mean that they are potentially hiking rates, whether they are, you know, or dovish, right, which may, might mean whether they might be holding or cutting rates. <clears throat> and so um, you have to really um, get the opinions of money managers because they're not trying to be on mainstream media being interviewed to be wrong, right? Regardless of what, um, you know, rumors are peddled out there in terms of, you know, bankers misleading, um, uh, you know, retail. And there's obviously, um, you know, uh, instances of that where, you know, you might have a bank that might say go long and then obviously things uh, go the other way, right? There are instances of that, but typically um, analysts that, are interviewed on publications like the Financial Times, you know, like Bloomberg have a different clientele, right? They have paying subscribers and they're not trying to mislead their paying subscribers, otherwise they lose credibility. And so when they're interviewed on these, you know, these, these big uh, publications and shows and they say, for example, well, we interpret the Federal Reserve's statement to be um, quite hawkish, for these reasons, right, and the reasons will typically be because it will tie back to what they're saying about um, future and expect their expectations on future GDP and uh, inflation numbers. Yeah, when they when they actually um, you know uh, give their analysis, they're not trying to be wrong. They're trying to keep their credibility intact so that you will then again read the next article and the next article and the next article, right? But Retail traders typically don't want to read. They want the path of least resistance, which is just looking at price and thinking that price is going to tell them exactly what is going the news is going to do um, or price is going to do in the future when ultimately it's fundamental analysis, yeah, as we say, yeah, that, um, you know, moves price, 
yeah, um, over the medium to long term. Now, in the short term, is something different. That's more liquidity, etc. But uh, I'm not going to get into that. But ultimately, it's really understanding the statement, right? Is that it's not that fundamental analysis doesn't work. It's understanding that retail traders are behind the curve. Now, um, if you want to get an idea of how um, to um, get ahead of the curve and understand GDP and inflation, I created about, what was it maybe about three years ago now, um, Forex Fundamental Analysis Full Course Euro Dollar Strategy in under 60 minutes. If, you've, if you haven't watched this or if you have watched this, I, I advise you to watch this again because I break down month to month using mainstream, mainstream media as well as data how I was, uh, my bias was short on the Euro Dollar for a whole year and how it worked out. Right. So um, that's definitely something that you should watch as well as uh, my fundamental analysis uh, playlist, which is many of those videos as you can. And you start to connect the dots. And so uh, thank you for the question. Thank you for the statement um, and uh, very interesting um, statement. And uh, hopefully that clarifies things or at least starts to clarify things uh, for you in terms of how uh, the market works, fundamental analysis works, and the fact that you have to try to be ahead of the curve and understanding what it is that moves markets in the first place. And that way you can be ahead of the curve um, more often than not. All right, guys, take care and uh, until the next video.